I'm standing here in my driveway in Wickford, Rhode Island here, and uh, we're just about ready to start another project alongside this boat right here. We're gonna build a brand new work skiff, very, very similar to this skiff in the yard right alongside of us here. And uh, obviously all the lumber in this skiff has come from the forest, and we're gonna show you that in a moment. The rest of the material in this skiff will be total boat product provided by Jamestown Distributors. We're lucky to even have this one here because it's nice to have a little bit of reference and uh, our main focus here is building a brand new boat and uh, these boats are fantastic. I grew up with these boats and they just about can do anything with these things. They've been uh, they're probably one of the most popular wooden boats there ever was on Narragansett Bay or anywhere on the East Coast. Uh, it's probably the most universal boat that was ever designed and uh, like I said I've had a, quite a bit of experience with these boats and I've built a number of them. So. It's been a number of years since I've built one, but that's our next project right next door to this one. And we're gonna cover every aspect of the construction and design of one of these boats and just the approach to how it's built. It's quite different than the way a lot of boats are built. And uh, when we're done, this information should be enough for you to just go right out in the backyard just like we're gonna do and build one for yourself. Many, many people built these skiffs in their backyards you know, one for themselves and, and maybe a couple of others, but there was quite a few builders that actually built these skiffs professionally, not in a big giant factory environment or anything like that, but in their garage or in the backyard, and they made a living actually doing it, and people made a living with these boats. These boats have a tremendous influence and uh, history in the Rhode Island heritage, and uh, like I said, I think these are one of my favorite kind of boats, and uh, this boat here is built just a little bit differently than we're gonna build ours. This one has got plywood sides and a fur bottom, and the one that we're gonna build is gonna be really built in a very traditional manner. It's gonna have plank sides, white cedar sides, probably a fur bottom, and nice oak for the gunnels and the chines, where this one here has got maranti for the chines and the frames, and the gunnels are all made of maranti. So this is what I would call a lumberyard skiff because pretty much every piece of wood that came or was put into this boat came out of a lumberyard. Now the one that we're going to build, the lumber has come from some native mills and different things like that. So we're going to call it uh, a, a kind of an original version of a Rhode Island work skiff. Now I'm kneeled down here alongside a nice oak timber that I had sawn that this is going to be most all of the structural aspects of the skiff that we're going to build other than the stem and the transom. Now, this is a yellow bark. It's a specific type of red oak that I value to be the highest quality of red oak that could possibly be. And uh, it's sawn in a special way. This particular timber is live sawn. And uh, years ago when we used to go to a mill, we could actually ask them for skiff stock and this is what you'd get. You'd get live sawn timber. They would saw it to this sweep like this, and uh, not everybody would accept lumber like this because they couldn't get nice wide pieces out of it or long wide pieces, but I'm not interested in that. What I'm interested in is the highest quality and the best grain that we can get in strips to make the chines and the rails and the frames and things out of. So I can saw it to a sweep, but then I can just straighten it right back out again because it's very flexible after it's sawn. There's a few other things about this pile of lumber here. It's got the chines in it. It's got railings in it. It's got covering boards that are already swept that I can lay down on the gunnels and trace out to cut covering boards out of it with the grain following it around because it'll be a little bit wider. So this was specifically sawn for this purpose. I've got it stacked up here the way we sawed it. It's stacked up in order the way it was sawn, and you can see it right here. This was the bottom of the tree. Right here, it was sawn off right here. This was the bell of the very bottom of the tree, and you can see the sweep in it right here. Now, I've also got some nice quartered lumber in here that I'm gonna make rails and different things out of because basically, these logs aren't big enough, and none of the mills in the state of Rhode Island or anywhere around these areas do quarter sawn lumber. They don't have logs big enough to bother knowing how to do it or bother with it at all, and they don't produce quarter sawn lumber. The only way you can get quartered lumber is to saw the log through and through. That just means that you're gonna saw it right through the whole log with bark on both sides. When you get to the middle of the log right down in here, you actually have quartered lumber on each side of the heart or what's considered to be the pith, which is the very, very center of the tree which has imperfections in it. So when you get in here, you've got very nice lumber on one side of the heart and very nice lumber on the other side and imperfections down the middle, which I'm just gonna cut out. So this is the ideal lumber 
for doing what we're going to do, building this skiff. Now I'd like to just show you another pile of lumber that I've got here. This is a pile of white oak, and uh, it's cut in short lengths. Uh, this is what I'm going to get the transom out of for the skiff. Now we're only going to use three of the pieces, but so I bought a little bit over. That just gives me a little bit of cushion so I can work around some of the imperfections. This is very nice material right here. This is very, very nice material. It's uh, planed out to an inch and three quarters thick. It's going to make a nice beefy transom for that skiff. All right, up on the bench here, we've got a number of pieces of Atlantic white cedar. Now, this cedar was sawn in the swamps in Florida. It grows probably as far up as the state of Rhode Island, but it's very seldomly harvested up here. And uh, I'm going to show you some of the pieces. On the other end here, I've got Andrew. He's my new assistant and apprentice, and uh, he's going to be involved with the building of this entire skiff. Now, I'd just like to show you this. This is what I call steeple grain right here. You can see that it runs out to a point like this. This is the edge of one of the annual rings, and this is another one here and another one here. So it's from a slight misalignment of how the lumber is sawn as compared to the annual rings. But when it runs out in both directions like that, that's an indication that you're in as good alignment as could possibly be. If the entire log had the steeple grain in one direction, you really misaligned it when you sawn it. So this was sawn properly. We've sawn some of it to be straight on one edge already, like this piece right here, and the other side has still got the flit sawn or the sapwood and the bark on it, and uh, we're gonna cut this nice and straight. So what we're gonna do with all of this is edge it and join it together, and it's gonna be the sides of our skiff. Now I'm gonna show you this piece of oak that I've got here up on the table saw. It's sawn five inches by five inches. It's a nice piece of white oak with beautiful grain in it. It's got the annual rings in it in this direction and they're perfectly in line with this side. So it's a quarter sawn piece of lumber. It's got the annual rings through it in one direction, not diagonally or anything like that. It was custom sawn. It's clear of the heart. The heart was right over here. Now I had it sawn to a five by five, clear of the heart. I'm gonna take one more inch of it off on this side to get a little further away from the heart. And then I'm gonna end up with a four by five and out of that four by five, I'm gonna rip the stem out for this skiff. We're gonna buck it off on the ends a little bit and shorten it up, we only need about four feet of it. Now we don't have any plans to follow as we build this skiff. We only know a very small amount of information about the shape of this boat that we wanna adhere to, and that would be the angle of the plank and adjoined to the stem, the width of the boat amidships on the bottom, and basically the width of the transom. And this is the one mold that we're gonna to use to bend the side planking over. It's placed about a third of the way back from the stem. And uh, what happens is it does the same exact thing that you'd be doing on a drawing board. You'd be bending a batten on a drawing board to a parabolic curve, and we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We're just gonna start right with the boat itself, connect the side plank into the stem, bend it over this station, connect it to the transom, and just keep going from there. We're gonna add the chines and the frames and the rest of the side plank and, and the gunnels and uh, the bottom. And uh, that's basically a very simple procedure as we go along. And uh, I think you'll find it to be quite interesting. We're actually gonna be designing some of the aspects of this boat as we go along. We can alter the width of the bottom, the shear line, the flare on the sides. Right now, this has an inch and a half flare on the sides in one foot or three inches and two feet and that's the way I've built all of them.